welcome from Omdal group of institutions to today's webinar. I am Dr. Shukonna, assistant professor at Omdal group of institutions and the moderator of this webinar. Omdal group of institutions is one of the leading colleges under Maulana Abul Kalam Azad University of Technology offering BTEC programs in computer science engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and civil engineering, and BR courses. The college is NAC accredited and approved by AICT and COA. Our topic today is how to prepare for the vital exams in this new normal. Before we start, let me explain how you can talk to us during the webinar. If you have any questions, please write them in the chat box and we will answer them at the end of the session. COVID-19 pandemic is the greatest challenge that education systems have ever faced. It has resulted in an in unprecedented disruption to the schools and learners all over the world. With most of the offline classes suspended and exams postponed, Many students have come face to face with some of the stress and challenges of self-studying at home. Schools and coaching classes have moved to e-line e-learning platforms, which may be new for many students. Cracking competitive exams requires a lot of focus along with determination and perseverance. But due to the current COVID-19 pandemic, it is a bit hard for students to concentrate on their studies. So now the question arises, how students can prepare for the vital exams during the COVID-19 pandemic? With the current situation, along with the exam stress or the fear of bad results is hampering the preparation for exams. Today, we are privileged to have amongst us Ms. Paromita Mitra Bhomik, who will share her valuable thoughts on how to deal with these issues. Now, without much ado, let me introduce you to Ms. Bhomi, consultant psychologist and learning and development trainer, Ms. Paramita Mitra Bhomi has been working in the area of clinical psychology, behavioral coaching and education for the past 20 years. She is the founder director of Anubha Positive Psychology Clinic, a renowned clinic providing psychological and guidance services in South Kolkata for the last 15 years. She is associated with the Bellevue Clinic and Sri Aurobindo Sheva Kendra of Kolkata. Her training programs are both for the corporate as well as for the educational sector and are geared up for learning and development, upgradation and capacity building. She is also a faculty in the Department of Psychology at DPS Ruby Park. Madam, please enlighten us with your talk. Madam, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, Sukanya ma'am, as you said, COVID pandemic had uh, been uh, uh, very unfair on us, especially the education sa sector suffered a lot. Uh, suddenly, the walls of the school vanished. The teachers became virtual and uh, the role of uh, parents in education became more important than ever before. Uh, what we actually prayed uh, uh, during this time and prayed very hard for was uh, the motivations uh, of the children and self-discipline. So the only way to uh, really uh, go over the challenges that COVID has actually thrown at other educators is basically to uh, be self-disciplined because there is no other way. There is nobody who is actually holding the ruler in right, right in front of you and making you learn. Discipline is the railing which actually helps you to cross the bridge. It is difficult, but it doesn't, uh, 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 you know, uh, it gives you a support so that you don't fall off the bridge. Somebody actually said that discipline is doing things which you should do, but you, which you don't want to do. Children, always remember that uh, if you want to be on the top 5% of the world or top 5% of the population, you should be willing to do what 95% of the populations are not willing to do. And that is have uh, activity scheduled, maintain regularity and impulse control when the exams are knocking at the door. At the same time, to maintain the balance is also important because if you're studying at a stretch, sometimes the brain becomes fatigued. I will also talk um, a little bit on 
the distraction techniques uh, and uh, you know how to uh, deal with the distractions uh, that happens when you're studying. Uh, very often we find that even if you have made a study schedule and uh, you cannot stick by it. So there is a reason for that is uh, nowadays because the school has moved on to uh, become a virtual school or uh, college has moved on to become a virtual college. We become over friendly with the net. As a result, it is not uh, surprising that we are also uh, using uh, net more than that is required, that we, may, we might be playing, playing games or addicted to uh, Facebook or Instagram, or maybe we are watching a movie while the class is on. The problem with virtual classroom is there's nobody there for uh, to guide us to see what we are doing. Uh, all the colleges are not having, I mean, although some of the uh, universities abroad have such softwares, I we do not use any such softwares. As a result, it is completely on the uh, child on the student to understand the importance of um, uh, you know uh, the uh, the examination in the classroom. If you get distracted, um, there is something called uh, a forest app which you can easily download, and uh, this forest app will actually uh, let you uh, be off your. Uh, mobile for sometimes you know it happens when you're very impulsive and uh, you don't want to use the mobile or you understand you're using the mobile too much but then you cannot control so what you can do is forest app is actually completely free you can download it and you can actually uh, install it to your uh, mobile and a plant will grow and you are setting the time it is basically timing yourself say I have 15 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour. And during that time, you're just going to study and not touch the uh, phone. Because when you're touching the phone, the plant actually vanishes. So even before it vanishes, it gives you a uh, uh, you know, warning that you know, you're know you going to kill your plant. So then you don't kill. So these are the things, if you're hooked on to computer, which is a uh, computer or mobile, which is a, a very common problem of students nowadays. Secondly is other distractions like TV, a lot of noise. What you can actually do, I'm giving you some practical tips. You can use white noise. Uh, white noise is something that masks other noise around you. It could be um, uh, something like uh, the uh, sounds of the forest or the sea. These are the white noises that you can use. Or simply, you can just plug uh, plug in. You know, the uh, uh, the system, uh, the earplugs that you find. Those you can just put without any music and do your work. There is another thing you must remember that you cannot reach your destination if you're not, uh, if you don't have a plan. So uh, it is also very, very important that you know where you want to go. If you're going to Darjeeling and uh, you know you're going to Darjeeling, you're not going to get off at Malda station because you like Malda and you liked the village outside. If you're going to Darjeeling, you're going to stay put on the, uh, on the train till you reach Darjeeling station. So that, that is the reason you must know where you want to go because many of, many of the children, you know, uh, students at this uh, competitive level, we find that maybe they are prepare, preparing for a, a particular competitive exam, coach, they're taking coaching classes, etc. But since they're not scoring very high marks, they often think that, okay, let me do that now, do something else, or they get demotivated. So uh, the other thing that I must tell you at this juncture is self-motivation is very important. Visualize yourself that you've almost reached the goal, which is called positive affirmation. In positive affirmation, you, uh, you believe that you can reach the goal. You can almost visualize that you have reached the goal. That way also you can stay motivated. Last but not the least in the challenges, I must say, that it is also important for the parents and the teachers to be supportive, to have their expectations within, uh, within uh, the limitations of what you see in the child, the capabilities of the child. It is usually 5% positive, 5% plus and minus from the last results. So keep your uh, expectations within limits. Otherwise, it becomes a pressure. That's it about the challenges. So, Tanya, ma'am, are there oh. any questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. Yes. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I think uh, the students really learnt a lot that planning, self-motivation are all necessary to reach the goals. Next, we have some questions like, 
what are the guiding principles in competitive exam preparation? Okay, so uh, I was talking about uh, exam preparation. Now I'm coming to the uh, pedagogy part of it. Uh, you know, the cognitive sciences part of uh, preparation. You see, uh, we need uh, times uh, uh, in between time is very important. Maybe you have a plan, you know the syllabus well, you have good guidance also. But apart from that, you need a plan to stick on. Like, you know, this is my time for education. But many children, uh, very good students, we have found that they're studying throughout the day. Now, if you study throughout the day, there might be mental fatigue. So usually, if it is better to take breaks of 15, 20 minutes. But uh, it is important that you take only 15, 20 minutes. Again, timing is required because if you uh, take break more than 15, 20 minutes, what happens is there is uh, the lack of motivation uh, comes in and whatever you've been doing for the 15, 20 minutes, you feel like doing that and not going back to studies. So many people go wrong with the breaks when they take it more than for more uh, uh, for a longer time than 15, 20 minutes. This is one thing. Second thing is, um, so during the break, what are you going to do? The best thing that you can do is because uh, we study in a, uh, you know, it, it's a sedentary habit, we sit and study. So the best thing would be uh, to do some, put, put in some music and movement uh, during that break period. You can move around, you can, uh, uh, you know, do some exercise or you can get something for home or you can listen to the music or you can, you know, uh, 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 talk to a friend. So this will give you much needed relaxation. I'm now going to show you some slides which are actually uh, going to be helpful during study preparation of the study material itself. These are taken for cognitive sciences. I'm just going to screen share. Can you see the board? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so study skills, I have just made four slides for you to understand. Uh, uh, we, uh, if you have to start uh, some new chapter, we actually know the PQRST uh, technique for Thomas Robinson. Uh, when you are studying something new, what you do, you just uh, get the preview of it first to get familiar with the material, go through the material. Then raise the questions. Don't do, after you've gone, just gone through the. It's a cursory glance to the material. After that, you ask yourself the questions you do not know, a questions whose answer you're seeking. So go to the material, then think. So the thought is very important. The reflection is very important after you've gone through the material. What is it that is left that I do not understand that I seek the, an answer for? So that you find out and then you read up the text or read up uh, any other reference material, talk to the uh, talk to your teacher and then you can you have to rewrite the re self recitation and rewriting part is very important for competitive exam children, although our competitive exam are mostly MCQ based, but writing down formula etc is extremely important because when you write down there are stronger neural connections in the brain. I will also talk about flashcards, et cetera, where writing down actually helps. So uh, our uh, self-recitation, where this S is basically self-recitation or rewriting. And after that, you can take your test yourself, which is basically the MCQ, which you have a lot. So PQRST technique is one of the techniques when you are starting a new chapter. Now, once you've done with the new chapter, next step, what? So now you're going to say, say, we are going to see the greatest challenge now is that you have learned everything online and you're going to probably face a paper, pens, uh, paper uh, pen and paper exam. So that is the greatest challenge and you're going to take it up. So uh, uh, in that case, there is some other technique which you, you're going to use. So PQR is the technique is when you're learning something new. After you've learned it, now that a few more days are left, what you can do per chapter is do a mind mapping. This is a mind map of Newton's law of motion. So what is mind map? Mind map is whatever, uh, this is not exactly a mind map, this is more of a brain map. In say one paper, you write down all the important concepts on the formulae and use colors. The more colors you use, the more images you use, this is just a very rough uh, brain map that I'm showing, the more colors and the more images you, the better you will remember. 
In fact, cognitive psychologists say that you write uh, the formula in different colors, different formulas in different colors. So if, if it's, uh, uh, you know, the um, equation for uh, finding out the area of an equilateral triangle or uh, the area of a quadrilateral, uh, those will be in different colors. So why colors? Because when you're using colors, you're using the left lobes of the brain, left, left lobe of the brain along with the uh, right lobe of the brain along with the left lobe of the brain. So both the lobes are uh, used when, you, when we are using colors and images. And there is also the picture superiority theory, which says that when you add images, it actually helps. So for that, we are actually coming to uh, this uh, dual coding theory of Pavio. Here, they're saying that when we remember, we remember words and we remember images. So when I say dog, you remember the dog, you probably remember, see a dog barking in front of you or a picture of a dog. So we have found that when we actually pair words with images, we remember better. So this is called the dual coding, that is verbal as well as a non-verbal concept of the object that we are trying to remember. So for this, this what we can do, so word is getting uh, changed into verbal processing, it's becoming knowledge. Image is again coming into non-verbal processing and it's becoming knowledge, the same knowledge it's becoming. So here, what we have to do, any concept that you study, just now Sukhaniya ma'am was saying, we are sending them videos. Videos are extremely important in remembering, in recalling, it does help. For example, you are learning Newton's law of motion or maybe electricity, and you can look up the videos there. When you look up the videos, you'll remember the concepts better because of cognitive psychology, theories of cognitive psychology. So this is another thing you must remember that uh, at the last minute preparation, when you're actually looking for some of the difficult concepts, the easier ones are fine if you're getting it right, fine. So there are concepts which are a little difficult for uh, some people. So those concepts, if it is not clear, go and look, have a look at the video because that will add image to the words and, as, uh, and the knowledge is going to be consolidated and it will be easier for you to remember it. The last one today is about flashcards. This you already know. A lot of the, you use. If you can't use brain mapping, you can use flashcards, especially for children and students who have difficulty in remembering. We use flashcards. Um, these are the important concepts are written. They are small cards. A uh, lot of companies now sell flashcards, but uh, I would suggest you make your own flashcard because when you make it with your hands, again, the neural connections are better. So you make it your way. You make it colorful, not black and white as I'm seeing, uh, showing you. And the flashcards you keep and they will definitely help you to get through the MCQs. The problem with the MCQs in um, during competitive exam is that uh, very often we think it is MCQ. So let me read the whole chapter and I will be able to do it. Okay, I will be able to answer the MCQ. That is where we go wrong. See, when you have to get, you have to get the concept clear and no matter how much the teacher is trying to teach you, you need to add on the, so if I have, if I have to repeat the image with the concept, flashcards, as well as a mind mapping, that is the, uh, writing all the important concepts at the end of the chapter uh, in a map, map form. So thank you. So that is all about the uh, studying strategies. Yes, thank you, ma'am. This will really help the students if they follow PQRST technique, mind mapping, dual coding theory, imaging, uh, for them to remember, for them to follow. It's really interesting also. So Thank you, ma'am. It is basically, you know, uh, with language, you're putting in images. With language, your words, you're putting in images. So that, yes. that images will also help to have a clear idea about a particular study about a particular material. Absolutely. Thank you, ma'am. It was really, very interesting. And I think it helped the students a lot. Next, another question we have, ma'am. How can the parents support the students during the preparation? Okay, so um, during uh, this juncture, the parental role is extremely important. We must first remember at the outset that parents are equally stressed especially during this time when there hasn't been classes for a very long time. I mean, you've not met your teacher and suddenly you get to know that the exam is going to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, offline. 
that gives a lot of stress and people are not and there have been uh, cases where uh, uh, children didn't really study and they actually took it for granted that it's going to be uh, online so you know i can somehow get through so uh, first thing is the expectation expectations should be realistic you know you've seen your child you've seen your child uh, more uh, more than the teachers this time so you know what to expect number one whenever you chalk out any kind of a career as career counselor psychologist would always ask you to have plan a plan b and plan c okay so a uh, plan a is something that you wanted to do and you're going to do but you need to have plan b and plan c also it's not that if i don't get through plan a i'm not going to you know it's it's kind of uh, the world is going to come to an end and it you have to be acceptable open minded the uh, may, uh, three main things that uh, uh, a parent should remember in dealing with uh, teens late teenagers uh, te late teens uh, of this ages uh, they must have an open mind number 2 they must be able to validate their feelings what their feelings is very true they must have an open communication there uh, in validating the feelings they uh, you know we often find parents saying uh, during our time i did it this way this is not your time this is their time so you know things are difficult you've never studied virtually so what they require is to listen to listen to them so even the parents are puzzled perplexed like how things are going to be but just to validate the feeling that this would be very helpful if you are very aggressive with your child at this age, at this stage what actually happens is the child turns to peers for support because we all want to have some pleasant uh, interaction we want pleasantness in your life in our lives so if interacting with our family members gives us unpleasantness and it is not very pleasant most of the time then we try doing things which makes us happy because uh, my human minds wants to uh, always want to be happy so in that case they turn to their peers and sometimes they take wrong, wrong decisions you will find them uh, uh, you know escaping classes not doing their work well listening to their peers have, having some group games all kinds of uh, video games so this is just to make the dopamine release that they have in their brain just to make themselves happy so the more aggressive you are the more strict you are on your parents the more uh, the parents are the more the child is going to turn to the peers so remember that if they are spending more time with the children uh, with other children if they are listening to uh, so called uh, other influences which you uh, which you do not like you look at yourself turn at yourself and ask what am i doing that he is turning away or she is turning away can i be a little more pleasant with her or him can i validate her feelings can i tell her i understand can i listen more and advise less so that is the second thing and of course the third thing is uh, you have to uh, be uh, with the child and also see if there are any red flags regarding the mental health if the child is actually having any mental health issues uh, never think that you know i never had any mental health issues so child will also not have any mental health issues because covid situation has given rise to a number of mental health issues right now uh, being confined at home not having friends to talk to not going out has uh, made many children depressed many many children you know are not able to study well because there is not i uh, mean enough uh, exercise also so these are the things you have to remember scolding them is not going to help if your child is not performing please try to find out what the whether he needs a better guidance um the personal guidance or but always remember that uh, this competitive exams uh, uh, the um you know the coaching classes uh, that that are there for competitive exam the exam the bar is set very high you know sometimes the bars are higher than the competitive exam itself so you cannot judge a child from how he is performing in the coaching class and if he is really not performing well you need to find out analyze the result and see where the child is going wrong maybe he is not using the study strategies uh, very often as i told you they think that i may i will probably re read the test uh, text and you know see the solved answers and do it but the concepts are not clear so um the clearing the concepts at the earlier stage is important so you be with the child the child is going to talk to you then thank you ma'am so this uh, the parents have a great role to play for their ward's development now at least when the students are uh, 
present at home for most of the time. So it's very important for the parents to understand their students, their children, and also uh, to help them uh, clear what to say, to help them uh, clear up the problems which they have at home. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Next, we have another question. What are the red flags in the domain of mental health to watch out for in our students? Uh, students' mental health issues can be varied. Okay. It can be lack of concentration. That's, that's to start with the easiest one these days. Uh, because we are used to uh, online classes, we are used to reading online and uh, uh, we are used to moving pictures, etc. Uh, concentrating on books are really becoming difficult. A concentration attention span is actually uh, going down. So in that case, a little bit of meditation can help. Listening to music can, can help. Ear plugging can help. So try to find out what is your concentration span, the child, the student's concentration span. How long the child is actually sitting down and studying and how long he's just sitting down probably or you know just fidgeting with things around or he's not able to sit down and just get up. So this concentration span uh, differs from people to people but one thing you must remember that some people are the kinesthetic kind of learner. They, uh, they learn more by moving. So uh, not that you know if I'm sitting down at the table with the, uh, on the on the chair and I'm studying, it means I'm studying a lot. It could be that you know I might just be moving around with the book. You should allow me. Some people, uh, some parents scold the children because they are probably listening to music while doing maths. A lot of people do it. So they're probably using the uh, music as a white noise to submerge other sounds around. So just allow them that. Some people are visual learners. They learn more by looking at the books than you know uh, reading aloud. So their parents again shout, why are you reading quietly? Why can't you read aloud? So, but they are visual learners. They are better when they learn uh, quietly. Then there are auditory learners who will learn loudly and people would again object, why are you learning loudly? So uh, type of learning uh, is very, very uh, customized to the brain and uh, Every learning at the one, one kind does not fit all the brain. So, you know, you, they must find their own way of learning, which is whatever is comfortable. What the parents can do for attention concentration is they can usually, um, without being judgmental, they can take a, a weekly exam or something which might actually help this. So this is about concentration attention. And also I told you about the forest app, et cetera, where you can time yourself and slowly you will find that your concentration is going up. Uh, then there are uh, depressed mood, which is very, very common in children. Depressed mood for various reasons. One of the reasons being not being able to meet friends. Uh, as I was telling you, the pandemic has uh, confined them. Uh, if you find that there is a change in the sleeping pattern and eating pat pattern, a drastic change in the performance, then please take the help of a mental health professional. Because uh, then there might be clinical depression lurking in the child, uh, which needs proper treatment. Uh, just uh, thinking that it will go away, it doesn't go away. So in that case, if the child is getting very much irritated or the child is not able to uh, sit at one place, you find there are crying spells, uh, et cetera. Mm, this is also very important. The next important at this stage is, you know, there are uh, relationship issues, which are very, very important, which is often uh, not taken into consideration because the parents think that it's a time to study, but the hormones don't understand it's a time to study. So there are breakups and makeups and things like that. So, and the parents have to understand, just validate what they're going through and, uh, they, they can go through this if the pair, they can actually talk to the parents. Half the people that land up in the clinic, we find that if they can talk to their parents about what they're going through, the parents just listen, they can find their solution. What happens is they keep their feelings pent up. They do not have professional counseling. Half of them don't, don't even need professional counseling if they have uh, you know, an adult listening to them unconditionally. But the problem is the moment you go and try telling something to your parents, they will start offering their advice, uh, what they think is right and wrong and what you should do rather than just listen to what you're trying to say. So that again, my appeal to parents that just learn to listen more than to talk and uh, then to talk uh, to your children. So that's the second. Third is anxiety. Examination anxiety is another very, very serious issue. Examination anxiety, uh, 
actually becomes acute two days before the exam, two to three days before the exam. The child is unable to remember anything. The child thinks that the mind is actually going blank. Uh, uh, the child uh, uh, is, uh, uh, even if they go to the examination hall, there is fainting. Sometimes we find the child fainting in the examination hall, the child not remembering anything, the child having crying spell, stomach upset. Now, uh, in examination, anxiety just doesn't happen suddenly. If the child is uh, now, um, uh, you know, um, sitting for competitive exam, see if there is a history of examination anxiety earlier, like in school, uh, during the school days. If you think the child has had uh, examination anxiety, bouts of examination anxiety during school days, then it is important that you take care even before the examination, uh, before the examination date. It, the chance there's a high probability the child will again have examination attack, uh, examination anxiety attack before the examination. So in that case, talk to a counselor, maybe online, but it will actually help. Uh, she or he can check up and uh, you know tell you where the child is not having the anxiety which is required, uh, the level of anxiety which will require uh, professional intervention. So examination anxiety, depression, then the last one is the suicidal thoughts. There would be children who uh, often think that, you know, if I, there's so much of money spent on me. So if, uh, uh, if I don't get through this, or if, if I don't get through this examination, then uh, uh, they I would, I will have to commit suicide, etc. The parents also um, uh, goes on telling them that I've spent so much of uh, money on you. So if the person is talking about suicide, we need to take the person seriously. There is a common a myth, which actually uh, there where people say that people who talk about suicide, they don't commit, but that is not true. We have found that half, more than half of the people who actually com uh, who commit suicide have spoken about it sometime or the other. So in that case, if your child is talking about ending life or not wanting to live, please take him or her seriously and immediately take uh, the person to a mental health professional because in India, the uh, uh, rate of st student suicide is very, very high. So it is very, very important that uh, we take the right uh, intervention at the right time. So I think uh, more or less I have covered the uh, red flags, which you have to be careful about. Um, and uh, have the communication open, ask questions. If you are in doubt, ask questions. If the, uh, is the, if the person is refusing food, if you, and you, know, uh, you see that the person is unable to sleep, these are the two uh, physiological uh, criteria of uh, finding out if the mental health is actually uh, not okay. Thank you, ma'am. So we see that type of learning varies from learner to learner. And if parents are able to listen to their child, help them sort out their problems, then it will, be a, uh, it will help their child a lot. They will be able to overcome the problems which they are facing day to day. Absolutely. Thank you, ma'am. Next, uh, what is your final message to the students, ma'am? Uh, to my students, I would say that uh, no exam on earth can actually evaluate a person 100% to the 100% extent. And competitive exams are exams where it is not enough to pass the exam. There is no pass marks. You will do well as well as the, you know, how the others are performed. So your performance will depend on other people's performance. They're tied up. So uh, if you don't get through performing a, a particular competitive exam, do not think that you're worthless because uh, again, if there is no pass mark, it's not you that it's not that you fail. It's just that other people were prepared better, and prep, it is just a question of preparation. It's not a question of any kind of other brilliance. So in that case, I'm sure that you're preparing well. The belief that you prepare, that you're prepared, or you're preparing, or your intention is to get through the exam is something that is very important. And uh, the factor is that you must realize that. What you need actually to do is just to become a little better than what you were last yesterday. So if we are a better version of ourselves, like what we were yesterday, we are a better version. And you have to be answerable to yourself. Okay, I'm better this way today. I'm better that way tomorrow. So that is enough. That is enough. 
and of course the discipline part is very uh, important because uh, in uh, competitive preparation uh, impulse control is very important a lot of time needs to be dedicated a lot of focus needs to be there so in that case the only way to go about is is by maintaining strict time for studies and uh, keeping the focus. So I have already discussed how you can keep your focus. And if you have maintained a particular place and time and can keep away the distractions, I think nothing can stop you from achieving your goals. Thank you. Uh, looks like we answered all your questions. Still, if there are any questions from the audience side, the audience, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box. There is a chat box. You can ask me any question you want. Okay, ma'am. Looks like we answered all your questions. I would like to thank respectable madam for sharing the valuable information clearly which I'm sure benefited the students greatly. So thank you for participating in the webinar. We hope to see you again next time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All the best. All the best. Thank you.